this video I'll cover the year 8 linear graphing fundamentals test. So this is all preview, so this is the C style questions that you should expect to see in your test. And um, this one is going to be all about linear equations. I'll put some time tags down in the description below so you can skip to question numbers and also so you can skip to the type of questions if you'd like. Now linear relationships are ones that form a line so on all these graphs we'll see these as positive or negative lines or in this case we'll be having a look at points on a Cartesian plane. This is a Cartesian plane over on the right here and it's really important that from now on we realise that these will be x and y um, directions on the, the graph, so the across ones, the horizontal ones are always your x values and your vertical ones, the up and down ones, are always your y. And when we write coordinates, we always write them as a pair and it's an x-y coordinate. You must go across the Cartesian plane before you go up and down. So it's always x before y. So if we give this a scale, this would be positive 10. And so with this, down here will be negative 10, over here will be minus 10 as well. So if we go to identify the first point, which is A, we'll do this one in blue. You have travelled two positions to the left in a negative direction. So the x value for this one is minus 2. We have not travelled up or down and left the um, the zero for the y so that means that we've got a y value of zero or if i say this another way at this point a where x is minus two y is nothing or zero if we do b something different happens we don't actually move right or left at all in this one so that means that our x value for this one is zero and we've traveled up to the point positive 6, so our y value is 6, or where x is 0, y is 6. In the case of C, we've left both axes, so in this case what we've done is we've travelled over to positive 8, so our x value is 8, and then we've travelled down in a negative direction to minus 4, so y value is minus 4. And the last one, which we'll do in green, no, we've done green already, we'll do purple, is our D, that's a very fat pen. In this case, we have gone across to 3, so we've got an X value of 3, and then we've travelled up to positive 8. So we've got a y value of positive 8, and there are our coordinates. In the next one, we're being asked to do the opposite. We're being given coordinates. So if I try and leave that in the screen so you can see both at the same time, it's the same sort of deal. This is our x-axis. This is our y-axis. So we've got positive 10 and positive 10. We've got negative 10, and we've got negative 10, and all the values in between. And so we might colour coordinate these ones as well. So we'll do E in blue, and we've got point 2 minus 4. So I'm going to go across to 2 and up to 4, and my point will land here. So this will be point E. Point F. F, I'm travelling 7 in the negative direction. And then I'm travelling down one in a negative direction. So it will land right there. And that will become point F. Remember, across before, up and down. So G, we're going to not travel right or left at all because look, I've got an X value of nothing. But I am going to travel down to minus eight. So that will be point G. And last of all, point H that needs to travel 3 in a negative direction across, and then we're traveling 9 positions down, so it's going to land right down here. 
right, so that one will be point H. And then we're all marked. All right, question two. We've got some tables to show here. This really is just substitution, and this is a little bit time consuming, this one. I like to start these at zero, even though there's lots of values here. So what's happening here is it's giving you a range of different values for x, and it's asking what y will be, that's this part here, when x is those values. And your job is to just substitute them in one at a time. If you've got a calculator, a neat little trick for this is if you write down the formula like this, y equals 4 times, this will become the x, plus 2. You can put this into your calculator, and then you can keep skipping back to the brackets. So you can take 0 the first time, and you can hit e. equals, and 4 times nothing is nothing. So nothing plus 2 will be 2. And then you can skip back in your calculator, get rid of the 0, and change it to a 1, and hit equals. 4 times 1 is 4, and 4 plus 2 is 6. You can keep doing that for each of your values. So you put 2 in next, and you'll get 8 plus 2 is 10. And then you can put it in for the negatives. Now, it's very important that you use your brackets if you're using your calculator for the negative values. Otherwise, your calculator will give you the wrong answer. So here we'll get minus 4 plus 2 makes minus 2. And we'll go back and change it again. So 4 times minus 2 makes minus 8 plus 2, which is minus 6. And then we'll do the last one. And we'll say 4 times minus 3 is minus 12, minus 12 plus 2 is 10. Minus 10, rather. But what we might also do is if we go back up and have a look at our answers that we've got here, you might notice that they're all increasing by 4. And this is the case for all your linear functions. So long as these x's up here are going up by an equal amount, these will go up by an equal amount too. So you see, for every time the x value increases by 1, the y value increases by 4. And this is interesting. We'll talk about this later in this paper, especially in the application section. But we can see here that we've got what's called a gradient of 4. And this explains how steeply this line's going up. So if we go over and we cheat a little bit on the second one, if we go and <clears throat> do the same thing, you can set yourself up with your calculator so that you've got this written on your screen. Your calculator will cope just fine with this. And you've got a spot here that you can put in your values. Put in zero. We'll say eight minus three times nothing. So eight minus nothing is eight. And then we'll change this out for a one. Eight minus three times one. So eight minus three is five. And then we might do the next one. We'll go eight minus three times two. So eight minus six is two. But look at this. These up here are jumping. They're decreasing by 3 each time. And look, it's decreasing by 3 each time. So we don't even really need to put them into our calculator. We could just cheat. We could decrease this by 3. And then we can just increase these by 3. We'd have a really fast answer. If you don't see how I did that, you'll have to put it into your calculator like we did below. But if you can see that link... And you can see that gradient up there is what's affecting that. And that'll help you with some of the harder questions later. All right, question three. Now what we're doing is we're talking about the gradient. And that is that line, that number that we just talked about. This one here, minus three and four. All of these equations follow a rule. And you'll learn that next year. It's a bit early for it now. But all of these Linear equations will follow the rule y equals mx plus c. And the m value, this one here, is the gradient. Okay, so that means this. Now, if we have a look at these lines, I'll skip to the second and third one first. If it's coming down like this line here, it has a negative gradient. 
and I like to think about this like my bank account, if I graphed my bank account and it was going down like that, that would be a very bad thing or a very negative thing. But this one, on the other hand, is going up, and that is a positive gradient. I'd feel very positive if my bank account graph was doing that. Now, it's a bit hard to see this one over on this side, but I think this is the line that's shooting across this way. And this particular gradient isn't going up or down, so it has a gradient of zero. Another word for gradient means slope. So this this one, this first one here, this one doesn't have a slope at all, so it has a, a gradient of zero. So if we were to actually write the rule for this one, this one would be one, two, three, four, five. Y would be minus five. And you notice it's got no number in front of an X like this one, because the number in front of the X would actually be a zero. But you don't need to know this until next year, so don't worry about that just at the moment. All right, moving on. Question four would like us to describe in words what's happening in the graph. So we've got a graph of someone's bank account, and it's how much money he's got here versus the amount of time. So what I might do is I'll just pause this and I'll write you an example. So you might answer it somewhere along these lines. David's bank balance showed a negative trend or it decreased for a while, but then showed no change for a while. So the decrease happened here. Then it showed no change for a period of time. And then finally it showed a steep positive trend or it increased. And in the last question of this section, question five, we've got to find some rules for the number pattern. Now, I'll try and do this simply, and I'll do this a little bit more complicated as well. Remember I mentioned before that all of these will follow a rule, something, or y equals mx plus c. Now, we don't have m's and c's here. What we've got is we've got b's and a's. So it's going to look something like this instead. B equals M A plus C. Now I'm getting ahead of you a little bit because you usually don't learn a lot about this until year nine, but for those who are learning about this, this will help. For everybody else, what I'm doing here is I'm noticing that I've got a jump of one, one, and here I've got a jump of one each time. So Let's just have a look at the relationship between A and B. In the first one, I notice that I need to add 5 to get from A to B. So I'm just going to have a look, guess and check. And it's the same here as well. Each time, I'm just adding 5. So that means that B will be A plus 5. And that will be the case no matter what value we give A. So even if we gave it 300, then B would become 305. For those who want a slightly more um, detailed answer to that, there's actually a little one sitting in front of here. Okay, And what I'm looking for is the rise, the change here over the run. Okay, So I'm looking for the change in B over the change in A, and that's what gives me that value. I don't actually have to write the one in there. It can just be a 1a with the a sitting there by itself. Let's have a look at the second one because it's a little bit more complicated. I can see that these ones are all going up by one as well. Okay, I can see that it's going to follow the rule y equals mx plus c because this is a linear uh, equation. So in this case, it's going to be m equals m L plus C, or the gradient in front of the L plus C. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at these ones. And look, this one goes up by 2. Well, actually, it goes down by 2, doesn't it? This one goes down by 2. And this one goes down by 2. So that means that there's a change of negative 2 each time. OK. 
Okay, so the m value is going to change by negative 2 each time, so it's going to be negative 2L. And if I just test this theory a little bit, let's do 1 minus 2 makes minus 2. How would I make that get to 12? I would have to add 14. So let's just test this one. So if I've got minus 2 times L and I add 14 each time, let's see what happens. We'll have to test the others. So let's test this one here. If I do minus 2 times 2, I get minus 4. And then minus 4 plus 14 gives me 10. That's great. That works. So tick. Let's check the next one. Minus 2 times 3 makes minus 6. And minus 6 plus 14 makes 8. That one's good too. Check this one. Minus 2 times 4 makes minus 8. Minus 8 plus 14 gives me 6. Tick. That one's great as well. So we've created our rule. And this is our answer here. We'll just tidy it up a little bit so it's nice and clear. M equals minus 2L plus 14. And that's the end of the fundamentals test.